What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG. Today, we're going to ask a question that has really challenged mankind for centuries. If an ape is given an M16, will he follow in the footsteps of monkey assassin cousins before him, like those little bastards from System Shock 2, or the giant punch-happy ape from the Rampage games? Or is he going to lay down his rifle, take up his banana daiquiri, and say, you know what? Peace. What is it good for? Today, we're going to find out in Crisis on the Planet of the Apes. This is a VR title by Fox Next Studios and currently out now for $10. So let's sit back and see how a simian simulator or virtual ape escape released today stacks up with games like Skyrim VR, also released today, or the alien Unreal Excellence of Primordian, made by basically just one person who somehow was able to rub off just a bit of Unreal in more ways than the original creators of Unreal could in their last game. As always, these reviews won't be two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap, and if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for Crisis on the Planet of the Apes. Simeon cellmates, thumb trigger rifles, and what would really happen if Coco the Ape escaped? Graphics start first. This is sort of like rendering a dorm. It's just monkeys in small rooms and flinging shit everywhere the entire time. Yet somehow they actually made a way to make the game look lifeless. I mean, come on, it's a post-apocalyptic medical center housing an innumerable number of copies of pissed off versions of Grape Ape. And at times it looks a bit like a student creation at a one week game dev session. It's got poor textures throughout most of the experience, coupled with locations that, for the lack of a better term, don't appear too natural. Which, when you think about it, is sort of an event because it's VR and that immersion just isn't even here most of the game. And I probably should have known that there might have been presentation problems further on when I opened up the main menu to look at the options and most of them had to do with hair and not the world. Like, patterned VR monkey hair was more important than, you know, texture, detail, and lighting. But whatever. Most of the game is played going from room to room to room to room in a facility where testing of apes has been occurring. It also happens to be an OSHA inspector's friggin' wet dream because aside from one or two places in this entire place that look upkept, this is like having you Samrid stage themselves in a building in downtown Detroit. And yes, it is after the fall of man begins and that is in the narrative of the apes timeline, but still, Jesus, put some boards down on stuff to cover the giant holes in the walls, the floors, and the ceilings. If you look at it, dire, of course, is what they were going for, and they nailed that. But in the end, it doesn't actually feel like a real place at all. It feels like an ape's jungle gym. And speaking of textures and lighting before, they're really only okay here with no ability to adjust them in the options and up close and personal with rock textures, especially in model geometry that even in current VR marketplace games seems abnormally low for a title like this. There was a lot of disappointment. That doesn't mean it's all bad. The apes look pretty cool and they're modeled well, as are the human enemies, with them popping in and out of cover or falling to their death. But that doesn't change the fact that the game is decidedly pedestrian in the entire presentation and overall incredibly basic looking. At least it runs really well, which is nice as that matters when you're peeking your hairy little head around a corner and all the human enemies in the level try to treat it like one of those clown mouth water guns at a carnival. Graphically, it just doesn't do much to seat you emotionally into the situation, and over time, it feels closer to bent knee sprinting through one of those bouncing castles that's been magically turned to stone. It just doesn't do a good job of taking the elements of the atmosphere, mixing them together to make you engage with the environment. Sound, music, and voice. You look promising. Dr. Devin, this one checks out. Looks like the military did their job after all. Yeah, took them long enough. Let's do sound first. Surprisingly, this is actually not that good. It's almost shocking consider 20th Century Fox is backing this as a publisher, and I'm pretty sure somewhere in their archives, they have to have a sample of an M4 that sounds better than some kid in ankle pool slapping their hands into the water to create gunfire sounds. Or the first time a helicopter flies by danger low, and it sounds like friggin' Thunderblade from the Sega Genesis just passed from your right ear to your left. It is odd throughout, and there's almost no full-throated sounds and a strangely restrictive spectrum on most of the samples. Environmentally, I would say it is a bit better, with little samples of wind whipping around you as you're on deserted building tops watching humans off each other. And there is some native DTS support, but honestly, that's just sort of like hearing Thunderblade roll up behind you. It's still Thunderblade. Overall, as a package, I would say it really does feel very low effort. And that brings us to music. 
Speaking of low effort, I want to be the musician on this game. Why? Well, because there's no damn music at all. And listen, I'm not saying I wanted a four deep string section following my monkey ass around as I climb the human bars on my way to sweet freedom. But Christ, have something. I can see this being useful in some games to impart an anxiety or an almost alien feeling to the experience. And sure, it's apes, but it's also a game where you have Simeon on Special Forces gun battles throughout the entire damn thing, so you would think they would have some Michael Bay moments at the very least that I could tease, but they don't. Voice. First, the good. I actually like the various times the apes mimicked human voices. They sound processed enough and close enough to the rough and ready prep that your throat would have for a workout like this, where you're going to be mimicking a bipedal creature with a friggin' chest the size of a 55-gallon drum. But the human voices in this are terrible. The main scientist does a somewhat passable job expressing some resentment towards the whole injecting apes with shit because it's funny experiments. But other than that, you don't have any voice acting that does anything to express that deep pants staining fear that it happened if a group of apes that could wield assault rifles suddenly staged the great escape. In the end, they could have just recorded screaming and that would have been enough, but they didn't. And of course, that brings us to gameplay and a bit about the story. Now, Crisis on Planet of the Apes tells the tale of you, an ape, escaping from one of the medical facilities that tests on apes five years after the simian flu outbreak in the movies. And that's about it. From that point on, you run and gun and leap and monkey climb through a series of rooms and outside of rooms and nearby rooms so that you can get to the others that have escaped prior or are escaping with you now. Here's the thing. There's a couple things the game does get right. The first is once again you have these arm swinging movement systems and we've seen this in other titles and I actually really do like the idea where it's not just using the thumb pad. Basically you swing your arms like you're walking. Well, not exactly like you're walking, but somewhat close of an approximation and the game moves you forward. Here there's a white silhouette of an ape indicating where you need to head and you run towards it. The issue here is that the game requires you to activate the spot by sort of grabbing and pulling that monkey icon towards you before you can begin running, which is all kind of weird since they already have that one place for you to go and that's it anyway for the most part. It does stunt the movement a bit. This does change up when there are gunfights and you have two to three places to go and you can pull yourself towards them and you'll leap into these hidden areas as long as there's a red monkey icon near them. So pretty much like normal life. That worked well if anything did with one hand gripping the cover and the other firing. This allows for some excellent subtle movement behind cover and all things being equal was probably the best part about the game. That felt very high fidelity compared to everything else. Sadly, in a game that has you shooting this many guns, the gun controls never feel right at all. Only some VR games have really nailed this, but Crisis seems to look at success and just be like, no, we don't want that. The guns don't have any real recoil, they don't feel right in that wand's grip, and strangely enough, require specific hands. For example, if you get an M16, you can only wield it in your right hand, shotgun in your left, which unless something was bugged meant I sometimes had to shoulder a gun, then grab a reload from the floor, then switch the reload to the opposite hand, then pull the gun back out to load it. Also, when it can only be described as probably the best idea ever, shooting is done by not pulling the trigger, but pushing in on the thumb pad, which would be like pressing down on the hammer of a 45 caliber to fire it. It makes no sense and is honestly awkward as hell. But luckily, if there's one thing to be happy about, it's the fact that right before I escaped, all the game's inhabitants dropped all their ammo just at monkey height to grab. And honestly, that's about it. Well, sometimes you jump, but that's just basically flinging both your arms up and releasing the triggers and your character jumps to a specific spot. I will say this, climbing is easily the best part of the game. It really does feel like a satisfactory attempt at showing how climbing could be done in some games. It works well. Additionally, going undercover and using that one hand to control where you are in cover worked incredibly well. But my God, the moment you pull the trigger, everything falls apart. And I think that's where the problems with Crisis just continually crop up. It does exactly what bad experience games do. It pretends strapping a camera on a four foot tall dolly and then wickering ape arms on the side is suddenly going to immerse you in some kind of experience. But you have to do the other things. The storyline is just terrible about monkey experiments. It doesn't get fleshed out at all. And in fact, despite their advertising of seeing it from both sides and seeing this horrible treatment, the only thing I can assume is that they meant both sides of a poorly constructed brick wall, the side with the ape on it and the side where he's shooting at. Fun factor. Experience games are fine. I have no problem with them, especially if they're priced right. Short titles that, you know, try to show you an experience. But sometimes something is so shoddy at delivering that experience that you wonder what's in it for everyone involved. I admit, while climbing in the game was okay, like I said, and so was cover, it's just puzzling, especially for a game this supported. 
The problem is the movement isn't great despite me liking the idea behind it. And in fact, having to grab that monkey icon to initiate it really does slow down any feeling of living in the moments, which for an experience game is quite important. And while the cover's good, the shooting itself is awkward as hell. And since the game's more of a pop and stop style shooter anyway, it's not like the enemies are flanking you or doing much else to aid that experience. To infect the core this much with such poor actual shooting is really unfortunate. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating system with rent being replaced by deep, deep sale on PC titles. This is a never touch. It is really odd here as to the timing as well. We have games like Fallout 4, which was a mess, but when adjusted, offered a full Fallout game. You have Skyrim VR, which just released for the major VR systems. And here you have a major studio creating its own development division and then apparently forgetting that once you put your name on the title, you actually need to support it. I haven't seen less support for something since Firefly. It's just thrown out there. And yes, this is all taken into account that the game is only $10, but getting a deal on getting kicked in the nuts really isn't a deal at all. This could have been a great atmospheric romp with you climbing around, sneaking, taking out enemies, and using really good gun mechanics when you absolutely had to. But in the end, all it really is is basically Time Crisis done worse with apes. So that's it for me. As always, if you want reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap from someone who buys a copy of every game, even if a code is given to them from a dev, stick with ACG. You can check out Twitter. You can also join the patron, which helps me continue to give you guys these reviews. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike the video, give it a thumbs down. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.